Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Flash Series webinar. Uh, we are talking about four must-have tactics for travel PPC, hosted by Hannafin Marketing. My name is Jamie Newton, and I am the Communications Manager for Hannafin. And your presenter today is William Larkham. He is a production associate at Hannafin Marketing, as well as a blogger at PPC Hero, and he manages several travel clients here at Hannafin. If you want to follow him, you can follow him on Twitter at Will underscore Larkham. So before we get started with today's presentation, uh, we just have a couple of things we want to go through. One, if you want to join the conversation, join us online on Twitter with the hashtag ThinkPPC. Um, and or if you have any questions, use the webinar question box to send us questions. We will have a live Q&A after Will's presentation. Um, real quick, we're going to do a live poll question. Um, ooh, let me get this started. Well, there we go. So. Um, we want to know how you manage your PPC accounts. Are you part of an in-house PPC team? Do you do all the marketing, including PPC? Um, do you work at an agency, or are you a consultant? And if you'll take a quick second and um, fill that out, and that just, just gives Will um, a bit more of information of who he's talking to today. So, Will, while they are filling that out, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background? Absolutely. Well, thank you for the awesome intro, Jamie. Uh, my name is William Larkham. As you said, I'm a production associate here at Hannapin. Uh, I'm a Bloomington resident and uh, work in our offices here. Graduated from Michigan State and huge basketball fan, so uh, let's not really discuss sports for a long time. <laughs> uh, during my time here, I've uh, had the luxury of working in a wide range of different verticals, and that includes travel, um, PPC, which has to do with you know tourism, transportation. Um, connecting through that uh, that paid audience, um, and that goes as far as uh, you know high budget clients to those that are a little more cost efficient and in pretty niche markets. Great. Well, thanks, Will. Thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. Uh, let's take a look at those poll results. Um, all right. It looks like majority of you are from an agency, but we have a good portion of you that are from in-house or you do all the marketing yourselves and 6% that are consultants. So welcome you guys, thanks for being on the webinar with us today. I'm ready to do your presentation, so take it away Will. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so before we get going here, let's just set a quick agenda. Uh, we'll give you the background of some trends we've seen in uh, Travel PPC over the last couple of years. Um, just some really high hitting uh, you know, facts and data. Um, to kind of see what's going on. Then we'll go into what is uh, quite possibly the most important part overall, which is your geo-targeting here. That's going to set up the backbone of your account and really go a long way for um, optimization um, for just about every tactic, every strategy we're looking at. Uh, right after that, we're going to discuss how you need to embrace your value props, uh, and that's traditionally through your value, um, excuse me, through your ad copy. So it doesn't make, uh, matter what your strengths are in your product themselves. It's simply that you are utilizing them to engage with the correct audience. Uh, after that, um, we'll talk about adjusting for seasonality. Uh, just about every PPC account certainly goes under some degree of seasonality, but few are bigger than the travel tourism industry. And right after that, we'll get into discussing you know, that low-hanging fruit, uh, remarketing, and bringing back those users. So let's set the scene here real quick with some, some high-hitting, high-level uh, statistics. Um, so I think a lot of us, uh, when we think of a travel agent, um, you know, we think of it as a, you know, a career that's long begun, uh, given way to the digital age. But the fact is there's a new travel agent, um, and that's the consumer. They're as informed as ever with uh, aggregator uh, review sites, um, social media. Uh, if they want the information, they can have it, and that makes them a very engaged, uh, ready-to-act audience. Um, along that line, we have 60% of leisure and 41% of business travelers make their own arrangements, and generally this is via the internet. Uh, internet travel booking revenue has grown 73% over the past five years, so we're seeing a huge uptick in the amount of people using the internet, searching, um, and then booking over that. And with that growth in revenue also means a growth in uh, competition. So it's really important to have your strategy honed in and use some of these high-level tactics here to make the overall picture as effective as possible. 
So first off, let's talk about geotargeting. Uh, while tourism generally is destination-based, travel is much more focused on your origin. Uh, the person who's searching is uh, very um, fine-tuned and focused on where it's beginning in addition to where it's ending. So it's, it's very helpful to be able to do that in that way to bring the correct audience within each marketplace or gateway. In this same idea, uh, by geotargeting my gateway, you're going to have uh, significantly increased budget control. And what that means is if the client comes to you and needs uh, you know, to push volume here, decrease volume there, if you see changes in demand and efficiency, it's very easy to go into your account and assess these different locations and locales and uh, adjust accordingly right off the bat. In addition to that budget control, it's easier to optimize around geotargeting if you geotarget by gateway. And what I mean by that is you can start honing in on how far um, from your, your specific origin your marketplace will extend. So maybe that's a radius, maybe that's a certain city or county, but by doing it this way it's uh, very easy or much easier, very easy is, uh, would be an overstatement for anything PVC. Um, but easier to uh, figure out where your efficiencies lie and where they start to drop off. Additionally, day parting, um, getting your ad schedule right as different marketplaces uh, act differently according to their audience's behavior. And of course, ad messaging um, and other gateway specific um, variables. Uh, as I just kind of mentioned there, it, this will allow you to deliver applicable messaging to unique markets. Uh, the fact is each market is going to have different preferences, different behaviors, um, different selling points that they truly gravitate towards, and this will really help you uh, accrue the right data to optimize around that. Uh, <clears throat> lastly, uh, this allows you to accrue relevant, organized, and actionable data. Now, while what I was just discussing was from the PPC perspective, uh, we've certainly had clients who have come to us to use our tools and our know-how to look at, uh, to provide feedback and information on an area that allows them to expand and uh, you know, kind of optimize their own um, beyond the PPC realm. So what that means is getting uh, demand, changes, all sorts of different data um, that is relevant to the specific gateway, marketplace, whatever it is that they're looking for us to search. Uh, now geotargeting in this realm can certainly limit reach um, as for someone like uh, a Bloomington resident where a lot of you know big time flights or big time travel are uh, offered from Indianapolis that would leave me out of the local market of some areas um, so in order to to still capitalize on what would be um, valuable traffic outside of that traditional marketplace you can create a complementary national campaign and what you're going to do when targeting this national traffic is only use keyword language that includes both destination and origin so we're using very specific language in which the user themselves has uh, pre-qualified themselves as outside of the market but looking for that specific area. Um, with that said, we don't want to be competing against ourselves or overlapping or muddying up data. Uh, so obviously we want to exclude the location targeting utilized in the original campaign in this national campaign that's opening up the traffic to a much higher realm. It's important for both the client and the user to understand that traffic and conversion rate may be lower, but uh, the benefit of coverage extended beyond traditional markets at a fairly low risk is certainly something worth looking into. Uh, the next thing is embracing your value props here. Now this is something I think every uh, PPC um, you, you know, marketer uses who's worth their salt. They embrace it in their overall strategy and their ad copy itself, and here we're going to talk about doing that in your ad copy. Uh, so as we discussed earlier, this is an extremely competitive market. Whenever searches of this realm come up, um, you know, you're going against different uh, like apps, Google apps within it, certainly uh, a wide aggregate of, um, of you know, travel providers, of specific um, like transportation services themselves. So because of that, you really need to embrace these strengths of your service to stand out in that crowded marketplace. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter if it's cost, convenience, comfort, whatever that is, you, you want to push that in order to uh, accrue or, excuse me, um, to attract the, the audience that is most likely to convert once you've got them on your site. 
So let's just look at an example here. We got flight search from one 2016 HeroConf location to the other. So we got flying from Philly to London. Uh, as you take a peek at that first top example, um, fly Philly to London. We got easy connections, two check bags, and free onboard Wi-Fi. Book now. So what we're seeing here is really a, a sale of the experience. Uh, we're looking at that convenience and the amenities that are provided. Now, on the other side, we have a ad that is selling the exact same product, but it's a round trip to London, and it's, it's very price-driven. We have 496 round trip to London, fly Philadelphia to London cheap. So we're really pushing that, uh, you know, the expense of this. And then also, since 1990, low fare is guaranteed. So they're showing their credibility to deliver that in that regard. Uh, ultimately, neither of these um, are necessarily have to be better than one another. They're just driving home different selling points, uh, which should be speaking to their product itself. Uh, just keep in mind when using things like price in your in your ad copy that there are restrictions within uh, the travel realm itself on when and how and how long those can be utilized. So make sure you're coordinating with your client, getting ad copy approved, and and adjusting accordingly. Uh, bonus points here with that ad copy is if uh, if it is at your access, you can use uh, specific persona data from each market, you know, uh, based on you know age or preferences, um, maybe adventure, whatever uh, is provided within that, you can coordinate with your client and really utilize to hone in on the messaging that is most relevant to that area while also still embracing those, those value props that, that you do throughout your entire strategy. Next thing we'll do is seasonality. Uh, obviously, PPC accounts are very susceptible to seasonality, and travel is one of the great examples of that. In fact, it's the name of the game with travel. You'll see swings up and down um, throughout the entire year. Uh, with this in mind, it's important to construct flexible budgets to anticipate shifts in demand. And what I mean by this is having a general sense of what your overall budget will, and then having a good understanding of the different gateways and how they fluctuate. Uh, a great way to do this is obviously looking at your own ad boards uh, data th through the last couple years just to see how um, efficiency, conversion rate, uh, to see how engagement factors have been changing. But it's also important not to limit this solely to AdWords, as sometimes looking back on that data, um, you know, can be somewhat misleading if you aren't uh, recalling a specific tactic or specific, um, you know, plan that was put in place at that time that altered that. So it's also important to look into analytics, obviously, and utilize that data to see how demand changed to see how overall volume did within both your all users and your organic traffic, and that will allow you to uh, kind of complete the picture with your own AdWords data and create these, these flexible budgets um, based on kind of a monthly plan. Now in that same regard, seasonality changes for your client themselves. Uh, they continually, it's, or it's important to continually communicate with them on any route changes or specific gateway needs. So this may mean shutting off service, starting service, um, pushing volume, um, increasing budgets there, uh, whatever it is that they need, it, creating a simple doc like this one below, uh, where it's just an easy toggle on of yes or no of both destination and origin for the routes can really go a long way. In that same regard, uh, it's important to note that you may not be pushing content for specific areas all year long. So it's important to get way out ahead of that and if they're opening up a new area, say three months from now, uh, certainly have the conversation about whether or not you believe it's worth uh, pushing content for it. And while seasonality is the main driver of demand changes, there's uh, current events retain a really high impact in this. And now this is kind of a, um, a double-edged sword here. Uh, we can see increases in demand such as new attractions or prominent events in a specific area. And we can also see decreases in demand, such as health scares or highly publicized tragedies. Um, the recent unfortunate events in Brussels um, make a good example of that, in that you want to go in and assess your traffic early. It's not necessarily having to dial back immediately, but simply keeping a keen eye on that and, uh, and seeing how it reacts in order to make sure you aren't you know, pushing any unnecessary spend. Um, in, in its entirety, it's just important to remain aware of the marketplace as a whole to see if there's any, you know, large industry-wide changes 
Um, and likely that's something you and your client will certainly be discussing no matter what, but that can certainly have an impact. And now lastly, we're going to talk about remarketing like a champion. Of course, it's that low-hanging fruit that we're always trying to get at, um, those easy conversions from those users with brand awareness who have uh, unfortunately moved on elsewhere. So let's just throw some statistics out there um, off the back to kind of get an understanding of why this is so important. According to Eye for Travel, anywhere from 25 to 60 percent of an audience is lost uh, with each click in a path to purchase. Uh, so that's a, a very significant amount simply from each uh, step within that uh, purchase path. Um, along those same lines, 92 percent of visitors will never return to a given website. Uh, before their final purchase. There's a huge majority of people with brand awareness looking for your service, looking for your product that are gone. So in order to take advantage of this, to pick that low-hanging fruit, uh, we can create custom audiences based upon destinations. Now while we geo-targeted uh, on origin earlier, uh, destination is kind of the more flashy sale. It would require less banners, less upkeep, um, but it still allows you to hit that user um, and bring them back to a relevant page. Now, speaking of relevant pages, if traffic is sufficient, it's even more beneficial to utilize the city pair um, of your audiences. So you create a pair with both uh, that they had been to the, you know, that city pair page or that they had been to both the origin and destinations. Um, what that will allow you to do is deliver an extremely relevant uh, landing page and really avoid as many of those additional steps in that path to purchase as we don't want to be seeing 25 to 60 percent for each click lost. Um, and the last part of remarketing here we're going to talk about is just remaining cognizant of the selling cycle of your product. Um, so you know if it's a real short bus trip or a real short uh, flight from you know Chicago to Detroit or it's you know a continent to continent flight, those are vastly different research times, vastly different uh, purchase paths. So it's very important to kind of take a look in your analytics data, see how often that purchase is made after day one, and what the maximum is, and adjust those membership links accordingly. Uh, so that, those are our, our four you know, high-level PPC travel tactics we've talked about today. And so we're going to kind of transition in here to the live Q&A time. Great. Well, thanks, Will. That was a great presentation. And, man, 92% of people, that, that's Crazy. Something you really got to keep focused on is remarketing strategy in this, because as we've seen, um, there's there's even you know multi-channel funnels that they're coming through. So it's yeah. a conversation that you got to have with your client and um, be thinking about the whole picture as opposed to just that initial click. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, it looks like um, we have just one question here. So, what do you believe? are the most important ad extensions for PPC travel? Okay, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, obviously, you'll always be using your site links to take up more, uh, you know, more real estate, um, but ultimately those could have the potential to direct them in the wrong location since you can't, you know, duplicate page. So be very, very, um, you know, uh, particular about what you're using with those. But beyond site links, I'd say structured snippets and call-outs are very valuable in that regard. Um, they allow you to tell uh, an even more well-developed picture than, say, your ad would itself without having to, uh, you know, sacrifice some of your ad copy room and leaving out some of those value props. Um, or So what I'm saying by that is in your structure snippets, um, you're able to speak of destinations um, from a specific origin, um, you know, from a specific gateway, uh, amenities. Um, so that's going back to some of your value props. And in that same idea, uh, call-outs can be very valuable with uh, some unique selling points. Um, maybe upcoming offers. Those two just really allow you to kind of complete the whole ad without utilizing some of your, you know, very valuable limited character space. Perfect. Okay, we just had one more question come through, and this will be our last question for the session today. Um, what kind of which kind? Well, which kind of placement for the remarketing campaigns? Yeah, which kind of placement? So that's something you'll definitely want to go into. Um, AdWords itself and use kind of your layered audiences uh, to look at um, first through analytics you can look at those affinity, affinity audiences and those in market kit audiences that you're pulling with both your all our user and organic traffic and then match that up as well that'll really help you um, hone in on those placements 
um, as you're going through and you know you're getting uh, some automatic placements from from AdWords or Bing itself, it's really important to weekly uh, you know identify which of those are wasted spend, which look like you know maybe dead, useless websites, um, as opposed to you know ones that really are you know speaking highly to travel traffic, to speaking to whatever your demographic it is. So the placements don't have to be centered fully on travel itself content, but content that travelers themselves find themselves going to. So you know maybe an adventure is on REI or um, just any sort of uh, thing that speaks to beyond just those sites. Great. Well, that's all the time we have today. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you have any feedback, please feel free to email us at marketing at hannapinmarketing.com. Um, or if you want to reach out to Will on Twitter, his Twitter handle, again, is at Will underscore Larkum, L-A-R-C-O-M. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a, a great day, and we'll see you again.